next order of business we'll have is what the uh, selectmen will meet with the finance committee in reference to the budget and uh, other related matters to come up in the next month or so. Uh, I don't know who we start off. If we want to start it off with uh, Richie, you want to bring it out in front here and. Yeah, in discussion with the board last week, we wanted to get together tonight to discuss the, uh, the deficit or the, uh, the budget that's out of balance by over $400,000 and to discuss the different options that are available. I think you can remember the finance committee got a copy of the cherry sheet as well as the information supplied with the cherry sheet that outlined the different options, whether it was the Super Tuesday the proposition to around override, the Affirmative non teacher salaries, the, um, whatever other alternatives there were in the budget. And tonight we can get together in general terms and discuss what we wanted to do and uh, set up time after the Labor Day we meet and start addressing the problems. That's what the board discussed last week. I think the board probably will have to start talking about Super Tuesday to see what the thoughts were about. Exactly four thousand or four hundred thousand, or is it more? I think uh, another figure there, isn't it? Four fifty. Four fifteen. Four seventy seven. Four fifteen. Four seventy seven. Got 
a little money in the stabilization fund that we've been trying to keep in that stabilization for that dark day. And the dark days are coming, as you said. Right? Darker. And well, okay, we are we are uh, we are in that uh, area. That, that was what we call things. we call the red zone. Okay. Uh, another one I was referring to was if there was anything in free cash that nothing. No. So that one is uh, we can get that one. Actually, the money that we were using Philly and taking away from some of these departments for the hundred and eighty thousand dollars for the insurance uh, only as you say two or three months ago is money that probably would have filtered down into the tables or into the for that account. But it didn't because we used it up. That's right. Uh, now words, we're moving ahead of ourselves. And, I, I, and everyone in this room understands that four hundred fifteen thousand dollars has to be either raised in some fashion. We all understand that, or we're going to carry it on in some way that we don't have to pay it at the present time. Right. Okay. All right. We understand that. And I'm going to go back those four months, if I may, for a second. When we sat in here and we all agreed that this coming year that we may be seeing the insurance go to a million dollars for town employees. Right. Am I correct? Right. All right. Now, I don't know where yes. it's going to go, but if, we're, if we were $180,000 short last year, and we only raised six hundred thousand dollars this year for our insurance. We're facing another bill coming up at the end of this year for our insurance. And you're right. Okay, are, are we are we thinking along the same lines here? Raise eight fifty to the straight the figure away. Eight hundred fifty thousand dollars. It wasn't yeah. raised. Yeah. yeah, it was raised eight fifty. But uh, what I'm trying to know, I'm trying to. We get that, that two hundred thousand, the million. It may not go to a million. Remember now, we, if everything worked out and we don't have any claims, and we we've been, uh, I understand that our uh, our history in the last couple of years has been bad on claims. And, um, one of the reasons that the insurance has been well, insurance has gone up twenty percent in our company. Has. Richie, you have met with. Uh, cost control within the last week or so. Yes. You know, what is he offering? First of all, he's going to come in to the board meeting on September 18th. He's coming in to this board yeah. September, September 18th. He's the chairman of the finance committee, the finance committee to attend. He's going to update how the first three months of the fiscal year have gone. So far, we've had claims run at about uh, thirty-five dollars to $40,000 a month. You know, our projection was to run at $60,000 a month. We're doing pretty good as far as claims go. The summer, the summer and the fall is pretty good. The winter is going to start picking up. Well, they're on vacation in the right. summer. On the winter time, they're going to get sick. And there are alternatives. I'll get through it in the summer. Like I said, last week, Blue Cross Blue Shield is coming up with some new programs that we're going to be looking at. New programs in what sense? They, they have new plans that put together that offer the same level of benefits at a, at a lesser cost. At a lesser cost? So, no, it'll be a savings to the town between employees. So, those are things we're we'll looking at. Well, just for the, just you might have the paperwork in your office, or you may have it right with you. If you would look back in last year's figures, not these first few months, look back in last year's figures, you'll find that those months, July, August, September, were the low months last year. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And then we got popped in, and I believe there was. A couple of months at sixty grand or seventy grand or in around February or March. Yeah, they start coming in around December. They peaked at ninety. Ninety one. They peaked at ninety. Yeah. Winter. Ninety thousand. So you know you can. This other insurance company they they follow it this way. Uh, so anyway, needless to say, we have eight hundred fifty thousand dollars for our insurance, and if we fall short, we'll be faced with raising more money. I mean, we have a problem, there's no question about this, because I think everybody here, uh, I know I have my, some opinions, I like to hear from others too, uh, as to which way we go with this. Uh, you know, if you want to go out there and we have to cut, we have a, what we call that school payroll type thing uh, down there. 
maybe somebody somebody would like that and somebody wouldn't like it because all you're doing with that filter is you're buying time down the road and you're going to have to pay it one time or another anyway so you just I don't you just, uh, I my feelings on it right now not being uh, too uh, involved in all the infighting on that I wouldn't be I would not be uh, afraid to carry that for a couple of years if that it is in two years. Yeah, so see if the state could straighten itself out and maybe able to help us out a little bit. Because we're certainly, unless, unless you, uh, unless uh, we've got this massive problem down the end of the street, down at the sort of treatment plant, that's going to be facing it. You've got the insurance. Uh, and other things. And other things. Uh, we have our litigation. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to ruin your night. <laughs> I thought have a coronary here. How but much? You know, we were talking about that just to, so that everyone gets into this. Yeah, we were talking about that just briefly. You know, it's we try to run this town much like we do our small business or our homes and the like. We've got to pay these bills as we we see fit, and we got to put a few dollars away for a bad day and all <coughs> that. Years ago, we tried to keep adding to the stabilization fund. Every year, something would come up that the stabilization fund was tapped. And if anyone would care to go back when we first started talking about stabilization, we tried to put in twenty-five, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars a year. If they had done that, if we had done, that, we had done that, we'd have about ten or fifteen million dollars in our kick right now with the interest in the life. Yeah. We've got to keep saving. We've got to put that money away. So we can't just keep tapping the stabilization fund, you know, because the state has put us in the fix that we have. Let's, let's try and reverse the tabletop for a while. Well, but you know, I, I agree with you 100% because I always advocated uh, the stabilization fund. But on the other hand, uh, you know, they look at you in Boston when it comes time to distribute money and they say, well, oh, geez, Clinton got a million or two million dollars in the stabilization fund. I wonder if it hurts us. What? The state on the distribution. Be nice. We had two million. No, I say if you did, I get the feeling sometimes they penalize towns for having money at this uh, point. I, I don't think they do. I don't, um, I don't see it. Brookline never gets much of the game here. No. Any of those, they, any of the fuck with <clears throat> They're, they're you know, Jim, they're a different if, you look at the, if you look at our, our bond rating in the town of Clinton, we're an A rating, right. All right? and there are probably only, in the, in the state of Massachusetts, probably seven or eight towns with double, triple rating. That's where you save your money. When you go out, you certainly, my God, if you don't know, no one does. When you go out and borrow money, that's when you take a kiss. When you go down to borrow money and pay the interest on bucks today, you're getting murdered. Every young person in this town, when they go out and try to buy a house or to buy a car, they get murdered on the interest. I never thought that our bonding was over, overextended by any means. You know, we, yeah. we come to the point now in the last two or three years, we've wiped out four pieces of bonding. You've got uh, a big bond coming up in another year, 300,000 a year that will be down. I wish it was this year it was down and it almost take care of something like you know, this. But the town has done a marvelous job in paying their bill. I think so. We have taken, and uh, in 20 years' time, we've had three schools, we've got a water, kind of water, a million dollars worth of water, a million dollars, and you paid them off, and we're down pretty darn good in the last few years, and it's getting better. I mean, you paid an awful lot of money back, but just just look at the interest that you paid on that money. And when you go out and you pay interest, and, you, and the town treasurer has to put down, like last year, and well, borrow money, uh, I think we borrowed three million? Well, you're paying three million, you're paying, uh, three, you're paying $250,000 interest. You couldn't pass the schools up because most of those schools you were getting 50 to 60 percent reimbursement from the state. Yeah, you, you know, saving the, the water. It was a saving the water. Yeah. You know,
it was a good deal. I mean, I no question about it. Well, there's no easy way, but uh, I think probably what we should be doing, uh, I think what we should be, and this is probably a, we should start treading water a little bit. I think we should sit down after the after Labor Day and have a meeting and look into the possibility of keeping this money on for a couple of years. I, I excuse myself here for a minute because I don't want to do all the talking. I have Me too. I four just members really want here to get it. You know, want to input from Bob and Michael and John sure. and from John. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll just let the two of you talk. You're doing very fine. Uh, originally, as far as the school money, I think it's I think it's over three hundred thousand that we could defer for a two-year period of time. Originally. I know my own thinking was that I was against doing something like this because it's eventually going to have to be paid anyway. But there is the other side of it, that if we can defer it and make credible cuts during that period of time so that the money would be there to pay that or be at the level where we wouldn't be over budget, then I think it is worth looking into. And like you said, if we come back after Labor Day and look at all facets of this, this could be, you know, a, maybe a big chunk of this. Uh, You're talking to attrition, uh, retirements, and uh, cutting well, no, I'm talking about the uh, some of the school. No, but money. to make up for that three hundred thousand dollars, you you go the route of uh, eliminating people, or just trying to merge things together closer and save money here and there. And no, we'd look at each each department and recognize where there may possibly be waste and where we think we possibly can maybe not spend money this year that doesn't have to be spent uh, so that we can get by. The main thing is to get by so that the town can survive, so that uh, uh, there's probably the rest of the money out there for that. Uh, I, I know I want to look more into that. I've had to look into a lot of other things, and I hadn't had the time to devote the energy to that that I should have at this point, but I, I'm still you know, looking towards that, and I don't have a decision on that yet. And this would be if, in fact, uh, we decide after Labor Day to go through and use that method to defer it, and then make those credible cuts before the next process, next budget uh, uh, hearings. I think it's, uh, I think it stands worth merit. Well, uh, as Jim said, <coughs> it's a combination of attrition, cutting back trying to find the areas that you can't cut back. you got to remember now that our town employees haven't had any cost of living raise. Is the state going to be able to be, or at the next quarter, well, they said they had a hundred and some odd million dollars. How they're coming in the next quarter, see what they, they've got to start turning some money over to the town and cities. Now, if in fact they do, Got to hold on. You see, I, I I buy some of the this and I buy some of that, but this this is what really bothers me. Now, we've taken uh, people out of the Department of Public Works. People think we don't. We haven't, but we have. You know that to be a fact. And you say, well, there's two guys in the DPW who's going to retire next year, or three, we'll say, and you're going to eliminate the jobs again. So you come down to the point then, Philly, if you don't even have enough of people to go out on the plows then plow the roads or you're running these problems, then what do you do? You go out and hire more wrecks to help that cost you more money on top of it and you, you don't gain anything. Do you think that that's always been you a hang keep, up? Right? That's always, you, you're talking about a hang up that I have against the town of Clinton for many years. We have a snow and ice account, you run out of snow and ice account and you run up the bill and you run up the bill and then you turn it right over to the next year's tax rate. Right. Okay? And you know, there are departments in this town that come to the Finance Committee, go to the Board of Selectmen, historically run out of money, and then all of a sudden they have a hell of an emergency, and they're up here looking for money. And we keep saying to them, we all do, you've got to learn to live within your budget. It's just like us in industry, in private business, we're trying to run 
jobs with 10 men when we know that we've got to have 15, okay? And you're trying to be short-handed and we're asking everyone to plug and be loyal to the town and the whole ball of wax. Well, you look around this room, there's not too many guys getting salaries out of this room. I don't see anyone here overpaid, but probably a, a hell of a lot of guys in here to put a lot of time in here. And we're glad to do it. Jim, can I raise a concern that I've got as a Stand. committee member and a citizen Stand. here? Stand. I, I happened to uh, catch up with our town treasurer recently this past weekend. I think she made me aware of the fact that we're, the town of Clinton is going to be needing to borrow some additional monies right. for anticipated revenue types of. Right. And that particular issue was never brought to a vote on the town floor, on the town meetings. I have the right, by the way, she can do what she wants. Well, I'm not talking about her ability. She has to do what she has to do. But I'm saying in the bigger picture, if we're able to somehow, by getting into a different format of a quarterly billing, the eventual oh, what you mean. All right. to save this town $200,000, that's a, a few teachers, that's a few firemen, that's a few policemen, whatever the case well, might be. I'd right. just like to see that issue be raised again, Jim, because it's a lot of money. and It just died right. on that floor. I think this board at that time was in favor of that. It was talked on the floor. Uh, an individual government called a meeting on, on us and it died right then and there. We had a me town meeting in the, in the meantime, we didn't bring it back. But well, I think to the point that, uh, you know, you got to remember now, somewhere it, it could have been brought back, but they figured it was too late for that year. It was too late. All right, I, I'll now, take that. I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, the the finance committee asked yep. your, your assistant, your right. administrative assistant, that's what it was. You're right. go to Bureau of Accounts are down in Boston and find out how many towns have chosen to go the quarterly billing and come back and see what kind of uh, favorite so that the questions that were asked by Mr. Durkin, Jim Durkin, could be answered intelligently so that everybody on that town hall floor that Jim was addressing could have the truthful answer. Does it work? Is it an opportunity and we were told in Worcester, when I went to those, that class in there, that they could, a town of our, our size, 10 to 15,000, would save between 40 and 45 thousand dollars a year. Okay? Now, in 10 years' time, if we, that's a half a mil. That's not bad saving, as Hanley's trying to point out. But see, I don't know, in, in, in all honesty, if the town should go that way, I don't See, know if it's if it's if it's that good a deal. This this is what we're doing, and we got caught up in this in the last couple of years. I, I think it started around uh, two years ago that we doing this heavy borrowing, and we're doing it for a lot of reasons. We got caught in on uh, three reasons last year, if I remember correctly, what started it up. We have an article on this on the state ballot, the question of where money was going to go. And then there was another question of the bills were going to be late because of the revaluation re process that was going on in the town. And the state didn't come true with the money. See, this is the, right back to the same square again. They didn't come back with the money when it was due at the proper quarterly payments. Now, when those didn't come back, that forced this town <coughs> to borrow almost pretty close to half of the tax levy, $3 million. Now, to pay for that $3 million, that had to be swung through all of last year and brought in this year to be made up for. Now we're starting the same thing this year. We're not going to carry enough interest the way it's going right now because we have a heavy unpaid tax law. Not a heavy tax, unpaid tax. Maybe they'll be paid. We have some bankruptcy. We have some Chapter 11 and so forth and so forth going on. Well, all these things add up. So there's four or five, maybe $600,000 floating around out there. We don't have it. So when we don't have it, we got to go out and borrow that money to make up. And when we borrow it, we don't have the money to pay for it. So we're going to swing it over, and then we start off our budget next year right away. We're in the hole. No question about it. Mr. Chair, can I ask you a couple of Go questions? Ahead, this is uh, updated as of 7-25-91, and it speaks to $415,000 shortage. Is that a firm figure, or are we closer to 450? No, I think the 415 is yeah. the new growth. One of the reasons.
why 450 came up. Was because at the time we didn't read that for cherry sheets. Had, hadn't arrived. So what's no, the cherry sheet no, no. telling you? No, no. The cherry sheet had arrived. Okay. But the reason why 450 was discussed was because at the time new growth wasn't certified. Okay, and there was a discussion with the assessor that new growth we, we projected for uh, 41,000. But the assessors were thinking they might not get any because of the new forms and the new way they calculate new growth at the state level. They sent in the forms and we were kind of holding our breath, hoping that we get something. The other day we got the new growth certified at forty nine thousand dollars. So what we thought was gonna be zero, bumped that up to over four fifty, now brings that four fifteen down by another eight thousand dollars. So you're around four oh seven for a deficit. Now out of that four oh seven, the teachers deferment just to go back on that, that's something we have to do. You don't have a choice on that not to do it. If you don't okay. want to do it, you have to go to town meeting and have the townspeople vote not to do it. That's right. Okay, so you have to do it. That's worth three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That we talked to the superintendent, he sent me a letter today. So that effect. It's three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. So that would knock the debt actual out of balance budget down to uh fifty seven. <coughs> Sorry. Richard, can you read what you just said please? The teacher's deferment is something you have to do. It's not a choice it's a, like a reverse Local option. Instead of having the local option to do it, the local option is not to do it. You're obligated to do it unless you have a town, town meeting and, the, and they reject it. That's right. So you're into the firm in any ways, whether you want That's to right. be or not. That's right. Okay. And this is something we get information, you know, every day. I mean, it's something that they're all, they're working for. But that is something that we know that we have to do. So that's 350 taken away from the the deficit of 407, or the out of balance of 407. So you're dealing with a 57 thousand dollar out of balance budget. Okay, so now, my next. Uh, one of the things that you have to look at in Cherry Sheet also, mm -hmm. you know, the packet I gave you, one of the things they talk about in the analysis is that they don't include $27,500 for urban uh, redevelopment in the Cherry Sheet this year. Okay, but they are going to, from what we know, they are going to send that to the town. So that could be counted in. Okay, so you can take another $27,500 off of that $57,000. All right, so now you're down to around twenty-six thousand dollars, twenty-seven thousand dollars, or even a little bit less of, of the deficit. So that's where we are with all those scenarios playing out. And again, we're finding as the legislature's coming back and as the Department of Revenue is putting these things together and sending us to, we're finding these things out as, you know, daily. And, um, and that's where we are with using the teachers to firm. That's where we are. Do we have in mind uh, to the Board of Selectmen a, a town meeting, you know, in the immediate future? Are we talking about that, or? That's something we're going to discuss. We're going to discuss that with people. Just one week from the day. I think uh, there was some talk about it, but we were talking about the early part of October, was it? Or the end of September sometime. If we could sit down and get this all together. I, I you know, my own sense of the problem is that I would uh, suggest that we're, we use the $350,000 so we don't have a town meeting with an article on there to reject it unless the school committee so desires that they would like to try that on the townspeople. I would suggest that if that's the scenario we follow, we're looking for $27,000 right. and that's the end of the game. So. If I think we should be talking about twenty-seven thousand dollars rather than four fifteen. Um, when do you feel as though this information is, uh, you know, when when we asked earlier this evening if this scenario was brought forth, we could probably use a little bit of different. language here, I think probably the Board of Selectmen should sit down and have the school committee, talk to the school committee, see what direction, and then if they're necessary to go to town meeting, we're going to have to get the, that money, $27,000 certainly is going to be the end of the world for us. All right. In the meantime, the time frame, I think you said September 18th, that you're going to have a meeting with the insurance, yeah. I would, you know, I, I sat down yesterday. Without really well, affecting anybody, Marty, insurance. would we be wise to wait for the insurance? Uh, you know. Will he give us something definite by the 18th of uh, September? As far as definite, 
talk with figures. The first three months? Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm not suggesting we have a town meeting in a hurry oh. or whatever. I just asked the question if you're thinking of it. No, yeah. The only thing I, I, I'm saying is that we, you know, we, we were talking about $415,000 and all of a sudden, after uh, 20 minutes of discussion, we find out that we're $27,000 in the hole. So I, I should think that what we should be doing is, is looking to the $27,000, which might be recaptured by, uh, from what the sense I get from what Mr. Uh, your administrative assistant just said, he's going to try to come in with the lower package. If that happens, we're probably going to make our twenty-seven thousand dollars there. There's no big hurry about a, a town <coughs> meeting unless the school committee. Uh, well, I, have, yes. I have the new programs ready for presentation. I don't know what they have. Rich, say that's anything. that's not effective till March, though, is right. it? Right. He's coming in to give an analysis of the first three months of the year, and, and the chairman of the finance committee hit it on the head. But the analysis he's going to give us is going to be for the summer, so you're going to see low claims this time around. Hmm. So the high claims are coming up. Winter, so to, to say that he's going to come in and save us any money right now, I think it's pretty No, but you spoke of the new right. package. The new package, yeah. yeah. That's going to be presentable package. that day, the D18. It depends on who process all their stuff ready for us. Supposedly they're getting it ready for us. Uh, Mr. Chairman, no. yes, uh, I would like to have just, uh, I'd like to have Richard come to the main to part of the board. And I, you know, there, there are people that watch this program and, you know, and I would like to have that three hundred and fifty thousand dollars explained a little better of where it's sitting and how it's going to be raised. It's in our budget and right now. Right now. It's right there. Right. There. All we're doing is we're deferring payment of the school teachers and, and the school people's salaries. That's all we're asking. The money's there. You're putting it in another year. That's you're putting it in next year. Carrying over to the next year. Carrying it over. Yeah. 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 July 7th, you pay. Do me a favor. Sure. I would like to have you explain that to our audience up there in the television exactly how it's going to and exactly where it's going to travel. Okay. Just, just to start off, the reason why she had some one of my questions or concerns earlier. And explain also that it doesn't go away. It's just, right. it's yeah. just the Yeah, we understand minute. that. Um, <laughs> 415000 until the decision is made which way we're going to go to firm the teacher salary. If they're going to reject it, the board decides that to put an article on the town meeting to reject it. The deficit is $415,000. Okay, that's why, so that's why, that's why, why we're asked, here tonight. I think that's tonight why we're going to decide I, all options, what we're going to do, whether to, to support the deferment of the teacher salaries or not, whether you know to put our money into it, you know, going for an override on Super Tuesday uh, or the stabilization fund, as Jimmy said earlier. These are things we're going to discuss tonight. So until those things are finally decided, 415 or 407 is the deficit. Okay, so as I'm hearing now, there's some support for the to staying with the deferment of the teacher salaries, which well, the chairman at the beginning of the outset of the, the meeting, Richard said that he was if looking if favorably upon the deferment plan. That's and if the well, chairman is looking there, he said he didn't know how the rest of the, well, that's the board, I, I, you know, you but know, I, 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 I'm, I'm open to other options in there. This is fine. I mean, this is a, uh, a Band-Aid type thing is what it amounts to. And it's just a Band-Aid for the time being. And, uh, you know, it, I don't know what's going to be. As Philly said, we hope that two years from now uh, things will be better. Uh, where Philly is in business, he may know more about it than I do. But it certainly don't look at it right now. But it might. I hope it does. It has to be. If it don't, we're, I don't know where, where we're all going. Basically, what the deferment does, it takes one month of the, the June payment of the teacher's salaries and puts it into July. And then that three hundred and the superintendent is to calculate the amount that would be deferred based on the salaries, total salaries for the uh, for the teachers. The, the superintendent sent me a letter today and that figure is three hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. That three hundred and fifty thousand dollars has to be raised in fiscal ninety three. But in fiscal ninety three you can defer again. One twelfth of the teacher salary to fiscal ninety four. It's going to be raised the same way we raised right. it this year. Yeah. And then you yeah. defer it. Okay. Defer yep. it to fiscal ninety four. That is the last time you defer it. Yep. Fiscal ninety four. You have to come up At with the money. At some point, you got to have. Right. Yeah. Look so it gives you two years or whatever to to, to so what's your address the problem. Just well done. Well explained. What you've got to do now is what we have been talking about 
in a combination of these two boards and right. all the boards in the town club, you would be putting that famous Jim, that Band-Aid on and you'll have that chance for the next couple of years, okay? That money has to be raised. How? Yeah. By either attrition, yeah. cutting back, yeah. saving the few dollars that we have, taking the money out of the stabilization, or whatever the town <laughs> chooses to do. But you have at least had a stopgap measure in time being. It's the only way you go. Unless, <laughs> no, one, no one likes to mention this, unless, which the town has got to realize, has got to realize, we've got to increase our tax base. We've been stumbling through it, and believe me, if we don't increase our tax base, it's going to catch us. The band-aid's going to get bigger. Then you're going to be wearing a sling. It's going to get bloodier, and you'll have to change it. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do then. In the meantime, in the meantime, which is the bad thing, it's status quo for everybody that's associated with the town. Mr. Chairman, could I address? Yes, sir. Pardon me. Uh, did the superintendent of schools uh, express any uh, displeasure or if, if the town opted to go that way or was there any kind of cooperation? cooperative spirit involved in the letter, or did you talk to them on the phone? Or? I'm wondering about whether they would be contesting no, I, uh, I haven't, the I haven't, law. I haven't seen any signs from it doesn't change anything for them. No, but I, oh, I realize that. When I'm just saying, you know, was there any sentiment there that he detected? That's no, I, I just, no sentiment whatsoever that there were, there were, he was not in favor of it. Uh, I spoke to the chairman of the school committee, and again, that was yesterday, and he didn't seem to against it, but again, it's something that they're still looking at. It's all coming up right now, and it's coming up fast, and I think they're discussing it probably as a committee with the superintendent. And the figures are just coming out now, so. Ooh, the figures may you change. Know, just reading something from here in the Department of Revenue, they're, they're still working on the mechanism. Good. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, there is a, yes. uh, an option that has not been mentioned here tonight, and that's the override. Does anybody have any feelings on that? I mentioned that one of the choices we have it override. Put that matter rest with the chairman. I can vote that we do not have the Super Tuesday override. I'll second second. That. Motion made by Mr. McNamara, seconded by Mr. Champagne and Mr. Ward. We do not have a Super override on the Tuesday. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous vote, Mary. Yeah. Plus, this motion has to be a Super Tuesday override. Just an option, that's all. I just yeah, it was an option as long as you did it by the 26th. Mr. Chairman, just, Sally, just a quick question to Richard, please. On this override, on this deferral of the teacher's salary, are, is there flexibility? Does it have to be one month? Can it be one week? Can it be two weeks? Uh, the it's, last it's, in the law, it's one month. It's going to be a seven-tenth. Yeah, it's one, one twelfth one of the budget. budget. Okay. Richard, tell me this. If we defer this $350,000, and this is out in front of us for the budget process next year, do we have to cut three hundred fifty thousand dollars if we find cuts, or can we cut a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand or something that we feel is credible that we can cut for that? We could do that. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah sure. Make the cuts, but I think as far as making any type of deferment, it's got to be the one month. So if you want to make the cuts and then still defer next year, it's going to be one month. We cut a portion of that now of that three fifty. We can eat into it. Right. It's not eating into it. Absolutely. But if you still have a deficit next year, say, say you cut half of it now and you still have a deficit of uh, 150 175000 next year, you can st you, you have to defer still the whole month's worth of salaries into fiscal 94. But you've got to be very careful. Of, uh, I'm a little and, and caught up on that one. No. Yeah. Well, uh, to, answer, to answer his question, if in fact that 350 extends to next year, or, so, or 350, all right, next year, we could be in, say, I say our deficit was a larger deficit. We still could only go the one month mm -hmm. of that of the school. Right. We did. You'd have to come right. up with the balance. But Bob was saying if it was a hundred thousand dollars down, which you know, just if discussion. you were able to cut it, can you take that hundred thousand dollars out of that uh, three hundred and fifty, or you got to go with the whole total? I, I, you can still cut it. Yeah. Sure, you can cut it. 
they still gonna have a deficit. So Ray, you're saying, saying that you're saying one twelve. I wouldn't save that hundred thousand. You're saying one twelve. Three years, you'd have your three hundred fifty thousand dollars right then and there. But you're saying like one twelve. Well, for the I thought it was good thinking. Still have to defer yeah. them one month. You still have deficit of two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Right. And you can't just defer the two hundred thousand dollars only. You have to defer the full month's worth of salary. So you're still pushing off the rest of it. You still you can cut into it. You can cut your budget as much as you yeah, want. Yeah, but even if you just uh, defer, you still have that. Do, all you're doing is, is taking care of the budget deficit, and then you're turning That's around right. and saying, "Okay, we've got fifty thousand dollars in the general fund," That's right. and you just keep building it, so right. that that shouldn't right. be That's our what concern. What you no, have to you know, if right. you if you keep if you it'll turn on to next year, sure. and after your two years, you you've got the three fifty you, you owe, but you've got that hundred that's carried right. into the year that you you right. only then have to raise a quarter of a million dollars on your next year's budget or your right. upcoming budget. Right. Exactly. Too bad you couldn't put away and get some interest in the sir. Do we have any discussion on the on anything here, Bob or John? No, I. I go on the teacher deferral. You know, I think as we all know, it's a budgetary maneuver. It's a focus, focus. We're going to have to face the fish John, sometime. it is. Absolutely yeah. that. It does. It gives us relief. There's no doubt about it. It gives us time yeah. to work on it. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the easiest way out. But at the same time, I would like to give some kind of option to the town meeting. But if we are going to have a town meeting well, on any type of matters, we should still put that on the on the warrant. And let the town, the town people have a say. Mr. Chairman. But if I think the school committee should anyone, have If anyone, has, input, any, I mean, if if anyone has anyone anything to add to it, you know, we've had a little general discussion. I, myself, we've talked about this for I don't know how many months that these, that these things were coming up. Uh, I don't know <coughs> by the next budgetary session that we sit down, okay, we're going to start this budget season, I believe, a little earlier than we did last year. And like uh, Bob Champagne said, that uh, we're going to have to take another look at these budgets and see if, we, if there is anything in there that we can take out. Um, for the last two years, we've, we've held everything at bay, and we did. We were able to come up with 180,000 to cover our insurance. We've got to look at the insurance for our town employees. They certainly deserve the insurance. And we've got to be able to look at our taxes, our tax rate, look at what money's coming in, and the timing of when the money's coming in. Like Dan Starr said, we've got to be ready. We've got to be ready with the information for the townspeople to vote intelligently on whether we want to go collecting the taxes four times a year. And if there's money to be saved, that timing will reduce our borrowing. Right. Yeah. You know? That's, that's a good item. Right just, to go on, it's just on that subject for a second. I don't have the exact number of towns that are doing it right now, but we talked to the tax collector in Clinton, who talked to other collectives who are doing it. It is a success, and they are, they are seeing uh, a savings. But it's important to note the Clinton, which is the fact that really should be the overriding reason why we should go for the quarterly tax going is not only did Phyllis borrow one million two hundred thousand dollars just last week with the quarterly selectman, she's out of money today. Yeah. She has to borrow uh, again. Yeah. We all know, week. we all know it's the, it's the, the million when, dollars. when Jim used to come in periodically when and borrow money. When we've gone from forty thousand or fifty thousand a year to three or four hundred thousand a year, this there's something that's a lot of money. There, wow. There's quite a uh, difference right there. If you said to me right now that last year, and I don't have the figures, but we can get them, that it cost the town of Clinton between three and four hundred thousand dollars to go out and borrow money, right. then I would say there's your deficit. I know. You know, there's your deficit. By not having the money there on our quarterly taxes, if that's the way we should go, if that's the way we should go, in the way we have the money in hand so that we don't have to borrow. Here we are in the year three months, and we're in for a million and a half already. <coughs> and it's going to grow. That's not good business. We grow. received that local aid local aid payment on time. I don't know if we can yeah. get our well, back a couple years. Well, now local aid. Local aid was uh, was to make up for what we deferred uh, last year. You can't keep deferring everything. I mean, it's just well, as I said, 
When when would you like to sit down with me? I would like to have uh, other members of the board fill if you don't mind if they have anything to say. No, but I say when would you? Do you have anything, Mike, that you want to talk about? Or? No, I just want to make a comment. I think everyone feels that this may be the way to go. I'm glad that the discussion is staying away from the stabilization fund as I uh, don't feel that we can sell out the future of the town for a short-term crisis. And, uh, but I think although it is uh, only a temporary measure, I think the teacher deferral will give us bias the time to uh, think of some cuts to be made. But I would like to see it as I think was uh, you know, stressed by some of the other members to see it done in this budget cycle and not to put it off for two years. I, I'd you know, like to see it done for one year measure, but, but I think that's the way, the only way to go right now. John, anything? I have nothing to add to it, although uh, I would say that any time you get a chance to use somebody else's money, use it. Don't use your own. Keep your own in the bank. And uh, I think things will straighten out within the, the time frame of using the Band-Aid as it's so called. But I think there's far more greater things to discuss, like that treatment plant. And where are we going to get the money for the uh, expertise and everything to break that line? I think that's what we should be talking about. That's going to hurt everyone. Uh, I am firmly Before agreed we uh, make any future... Huh? I asked him. Did you want to say something? Or I, I don't know. I was watching the show and I uh, got, into, got into a discussion about the three hundred fifty thousand dollars and uh, how you uh, how we arrive at that and uh, what does it mean and what do you do next year? And I said uh, somebody said, well, you can put the town meeting off, but the only one that can reject or approve that is a town meeting. No one in this room. Or, I, I I just gave those figures to Mr. Monturi because of the memo that came out from the Revenue Department saying it has to be done until the town meeting. And uh, until the town meeting is held and that's rejected or approved, then you haven't got $350,000. And uh, we just are saying that that's one-twelfth of the salary that's withheld for a teacher's summer pay. It doesn't involve non-teaching personnel or administrators or other things that are in that salary schedule. And that 350000 has to go back into fiscal 93, and then you have to figure out next year's salary schedule and take one twelfth of that, and all you're doing is putting off the inevitable somewhere along the line. You're going to have to make up either 350000 or 450000 in one year, uh, plus any other monies that you might find as a deficit. Uh, I've talked to Mr. Monturi. I, I just wanted you people to realize that the school committee has not approved or disapproved this, this is just information because the Revenue Department said we have to provide it. Uh, there has not been any discussion by the school committee, nor have we discussed this with the Teachers Association relative to contractual uh, agreements, which may into the picture also. So it's not so cut and dry that you are sitting here with $350,000. I just want to bring that up. So Jim, I guess my, you just get it. my question has been answered by the sentiment of the superintendent. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Billy, for coming down. I would, I would suggest at this point that yeah. as of this moment, unless we have a town meeting within the next two or three months, that is law that we defer one-twelfth of the teacher's salary. Now, if we have a town meeting, which we undoubtedly will, and there's an article which there undoubtedly will be an article on that town meeting, if the town meeting people feel as if they should reject that, it's rejected, but they don't have any say as to whether or not they approve it. The school committee does not have a say whether they approve it. The collective bargaining agreements do not have any purview within this law. The law is specific unless a town meeting rejects it, not approves it, rejects it, it's law. And that's all there is to it. There's no approval. They don't approve it. We yeah. don't approve it. The only one that approved it was the state legislature down there in Boston. Now, if you want to overturn that, and that's why I asked that question about the sentiment of the, the school committee, if you want to overturn that at a town meeting, you're going to have to 
do it in that fashion. That's what I mean. So nobody said the school committee was not there. It said that they that has to go to a town meeting for rejection or approval. That's the way that's stated. It, I don't think it's it reads that way. It says for rejection. Rejection all the time. You go to a town meeting and the townspeople have an opportunity to reject it. Period. They don't have an opportunity to approve it. Of course, if they don't reject it, that's in a sense of approval. But if and you read that whole thing, you'll find out it does refer to contractual agreements. Certainly. And you have to discuss yep. these things with the people you got contracts positively. And they may very well say that they want that to be heard at a town meeting because well, they're... Well, I, I would suggest that the, the board has every intention of putting an article on the town meeting floor. Oh, it would be, it would be improper of us either the Finance Committee or the Board of Selectmen to take any other tax. But you know, Marty, and I know that that $350,000 that you're going to defer, if that in fact happens, is going to be put into a new budget for the different tax base. It's going to be put in the next year's budget, and like someone on the Board of Selectmen said earlier, all we're doing, I think it was Chairman Coyne, uh, all we're doing is, is buying some time, and right now, time is of the essence. I can't think of any time that I can remember in the history that I haven't been around too long, that the town has been, been in any worse shape. We're buying a little bit of time. Philly said it very appropriately earlier. We're looking to, to see if we can get through this next fiscal year, hoping that the, the state will then have things turned around so that we're back on an even keel. We hope that happens. Very eloquently. We don't want to make the spirit of the moment cuts. We want to make credible cuts, something we can live with. This gives us the time to do that. That's the way I look at it. Well, I think the other the other option open to us is start uh, nickel and diming uh, departments and in, in, in the in the end the end result of nickel and diming departments because the school department spends more money than they went in town, we're going to take more money off the school department. We're looking not to do that. We're looking for an avenue that we can take that we aren't going to hurt any departments, including the school department, relative to what well, we're saying is we're not going to pay you June 28th, we're going to pay you July 4th or 5th or 7th. That's all we're suggesting. And that's just what the law is saying. I'm not saying it. The law is saying it. <laughs> well, it, it would be a holiday if we paid a lot of people. Chairman, uh, I guess Marty's right, right as, as far as the law. The only thing is the superintendent's also right. You have to pay attention to the collective bargaining agreement. It does say oh, that. Yeah, I'll tell you. And, uh, I think what we have to do is we have to get the superintendent to talk to the school committee and, and yeah. get the the, uh, the union down with them and, and try to work this thing out. That we're looking for some help and we appreciate their how they stand on it. That way, when we do go with town meeting, we can have article and explain that that's our best bet. Well, okay. Yeah. But you're going to have your support. Right? You're going to have the support. And I'm just going to mention benefit. this to you. There, there are towns right now that are upset with the fact that, that they have to hold a town meeting and they don't even have a deficit. That they have to spend five to six hundred dollars to hold a town meeting to reject this. Now I agree that Brendan has a job that he's going to get down there and explain to the collective bargaining people that this is where we are. But if the collecting bargaining people or the negotiating committee says we don't like it, all Brenny's got to say is, gee, I'm very sorry. Yeah, here's the but the law says unless they rejected a, <coughs> the town meeting, we own it. Yes. Not only yes. Brenny and us, but... but the hot town owns it. Another thing you've got to remember, if you choose the other direction, if you say, all right, let's not use the band-aid, let's not do that. We've got we've got to go back, sit down with the Board of Select and Finance Committee and all our committee, and cut $415,000 out of the budget. Well, same, people who, okay. same people Okay. Now, now, that's another story. now, the superintendent of schools is going to have some explaining to do to the school committee. Where are you going to get that? You know, how many the bottom? Right off the reel, four hundred thousand people, four hundred thousand uh, dollars. Who? 
which, which department would be affected the most? The school department. So it's a catch-20, okay? You're, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. And here we are saying, look, next year, as Bob Champagne said, okay, and we all, I think, agree with this, can we use attrition? Can we use retirement? Can we afford to keep knocking these departments down so they become not efficient at all, like Jim said? We've got good departments now. We've got, in my opinion, good schools, police, fire, and we've covered, and we've tried to, I think pretty decently, try to give them a good living wage as best we could do when the good, good times are here. And here we are stuck in a, in, a, in, a, in a crunch, and we've got the deficit. And we have an opportunity here to carry it for a couple of years to see what can come up next year. Can we? Can we? If, if in fact, you take that $350,000 and, and in March next year, our administrative assistant says, you know, January, February, and this month, we've gone $90,000, $100,000 into our insurance. There, we've got to come up with another $100,000. But we're hitting that million mark. And we've been in litigation on the, on the dump. And we've got the uh, sewer down here doing, and I don't want to mention sewer or Bob Winship will start right on me. <laughs> 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 so here's what we're faced with. And you gentlemen have got to decide when's the best time to sit down for a meeting, when we're going to meet with the insurance company, when we're going to be able to give all these facts and figures on the quarterly tax so that we can intelligently tell our taxpayers, here it is, here's the game plan, what are we going to do? And let them intelligently decide and on something to vote for. And I think we've done our job. I agree. Uh, Any other questions? Before we go into uh, closing or making any dates here, I'd like to bring up a subject. It's a new subject. And the place happens to be located on the other end of High Street, you know what I mean? The water. Sure. Uh, we have a problem. We had a meeting a week ago. We talked about it. We had the uh, Senator Chase out from Worcester and our own representative, William, William Constantino, <coughs> who brought the knowledge to it, to us that this bill has been filed. If I'm right, it's in committee. It's making its way down there somewhere. Uh, that the town of Clinton take over the operation of the uh, whole play, the whole division on High Street. It stated that uh, the operation cost of this would run around a million three hundred thousand dollars, which I don't believe. I think it'd probably be more. The plan is brand new, it's supposed to cost in the vicinity of $40 million and turn it over to us to be a complete disaster, I think, personally, again. Uh, that doesn't mean because we have a new plant that we're going to go in there and run it just like a, you know, nothing says that six months or a year down the line a generator couldn't go on us or anything cost us another quarter or half a million dollars down there. You've got to employ people down there. You need an engineer and staff. Uh, somebody's got to maintain pipes going into it and everything else. And, there's a, and the sludge is going to be brought up to the South Meadow area. Uh, there's three supposedly containers up there above ground, which don't look very big. There's a fourth one going to be built there, John. Yeah. There's going to be another one built up there, and I'll make four. And if you ever go by there someday, you want to look at them. They're not very deep. And, start putting sludge in there and covering it over, it doesn't look like it's going to last very long, which could create a problem in maybe 10 years, 15 years or less, as to where the sludge is going to go. That's going to be another additional cost for the town down the line. Uh, the rates, could, 
I wouldn't even assume to say what the rates would be around here in another two or three years. So it's quite a it's a, it's a complete disaster, and we went we went over it quite a bit. Uh, we've made up some letters. Uh, the chairman, and myself, has sent them in. Members of the board have sent them down, explaining to us we're going to try to get a meeting with the governor and get down to the board and explain our position on the whole thing. And then we try to work something where we have get the people involved in it. And we were going to I was going to bring it up later on in the meeting, but everybody to draw up letters, uh, send them on to our Governor Will at the State House and our Lieutenant Governor <coughs> Salucci, who was a neighbor of ours from Hudson, and tell them our problem and, uh, you know, taking in the town 5.2 square miles. They took 40% of the town when they built this thing, 1895. We never had any problems with them. They have given us additional uh, benefits since then. And Form of some more water, but there's a lot of things we could go. Maybe there's some few things here we could make an agreement with them and get out of it as light as we can. We could go for the whole thing and try to have the whole thing abolished and leave it just the way it is. So the matter comes up. <coughs> uh, what bothers me is I don't have any clout down there. Well, I have are all retired, I guess, and the members here, I don't know what their clout is down there. We can, too, Jim. We, <laughs> we, we can talk to them, but, uh, you know, I, I'm looking at, do we, need, do, do we need help in this thing? And I mean somebody that could represent us uh, in the form of a person who would do some layoffs on workforce down there or something. That's what I was lobbyist. thinking right off the bat. Has anybody given any thought to hiring a lobbyist? To the cause of law. That's probably not same. a bad idea. But you mentioned that two or three months ago. Yeah. It takes some money. It takes some money, but I mean, how else you want to fight? You can't fight it. And I fi I'd have to file a bill to abolish yeah. the MWRA. You know, it, it kind I'm of serious. I, I direct uh, the uh, representative in the state senate to file a bill to abolish the MWRA. And let them fight that while we're fighting this. Give them something to fight. You know, you, uh, you, you mentioned a $40 million plant. $40 million plant, they, uh, they built down there with 95% federal aid. Yeah. Okay. And now you're saying, you're not you now, we're saying they want to turn, turn it over to the town of Clinton to maintain and run a uh, $40 million operation with no option. No opportunity of any time, shape, or form of saying, did we need a $40 million plant down there? Could we have done it with a $10 million plant? I can remember two, three years ago when they were all around the state fighting for the darn sewage treatment plant. Now that it's being built and now that it's built, now everybody disappeared. Everyone that was in favor of it has now disappeared yeah. because yeah. of it. You know, when that, you're right, Phil, I meant, I'm glad you brought that up because it brought me back to the point now is that when that was built, there was something like five towns that were involved yeah. in this thing. It was a regional type thing to start out with down there. And if I remember correctly, it was Clinton, Lancaster, uh, and Sterling, Berlin, and Berlin, and Bolton. another. And then everybody said, well, how are they going to get sewage from Berlin and Bolton to Clinton? It's no real hard problem because today they, they pump it all the way along the line. We pump some of our own sewage and water in town. I, I think, but, uh, Jim, excuse me, but I, I think what they meant that those towns had fallen in by tanks yeah. and stuff. But I, I think they well, had a granular of, of, of sewer in some of those towns. Well, too. they had five or six uh, options they were going to try to go, but uh, most of them would have uh, had uh, brought their uh, tankers down and uh, emptied it would have paid that way. Their septic systems and the like paid, paid into the plant. Needless to say, uh, our they stuck it in our nose back several years ago. If, if, since I've been a kid, I, if, I, if I've read, or if there's been uh, 15 different times that we've made surveys of the infiltration into the system, into our, into the town system down here in the Metropolitan uh, Water Commission down at the end of high school, we had a primary system down there, more than likely, had seen its day because of the infiltration of the land. On a 
stormy day down there, all you did is you go down there and they opened it up and it went it run. Right, right into the Nash River. Right. No one wants to see that, okay? But I don't think with any imagination that we, the town of Clinton, needed a $40 million plant, all right? We could have done it with far less and probably still got the 95% state uh, federal aid, okay? The state got a plant down there for 95% paid, and now they're going to give it to us? And that, well, however, however, now there is a certain amount of money they will give you to start up and get it going. I think how many millions of dollars was, was that they were going to give? Well, they didn't say about giving anything. Well, no, there was, it was the original figure was ten million dollars. Ten million bucks start up the whole ballet, and then get it after you got it going. You would like go over the plant. Well, to take this, the ten million and run. Michael knows more about it than the point of Michael. It's, this new proposal didn't have any money. Just in terms of a, establishes a, a sewer district, which gives them the power to charge households to start up and run the plant. So there was no money in this deal. So, uh, no money for the town, but the state was going to get 120 million dollars off of the MWRA. Bill Ball was looking for a bill off of the MWRA, and he wants 120 million dollars. And one of the things in the bill is to, you know, re repeal all the former acts that the town of Clinton has. Give it back to us. Sounds pretty good, but it sounds to me like it's a little bit of a Trojan horse. Yeah. <laughs> Put it my way. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, Henry. Uh, don't you think you should be getting some of these companies, big companies in town involved in this, and uh, they might have a lot more club than a lot of other people, plus their employees, and the schools, and everybody else writing letters down? It, it, it's very difficult, in, in my opinion, Henry, yeah. and that's a very good yeah. point. Yeah is that this is an authority, okay, very difficult to get at them. Yep. The only way you can get at them is dissolve them. Exactly. And that's what's got to be done. You know, we have no, we, the taxpayer, have no control over this. We have absolute, they are an authority. They're, they're pretty darn close to being untouchable. Untouchable. <laughs> no. Plenty of money and plenty of lawyers. Is there any legal uh, agreement anywhere that stipulates that, that Clinton was given this deal? Was this a verbal agreement? Is it in writing? It, it didn't have to be in the courthouse. Well, the, latest, the latest acts in 1987. The latest acts were the original. The, 19, the latest law was back to 1987, which is only four years old. That's when they transferred That's the latest the act. From the control of the MDC to, to the, the MWRA. MWRA. And they want to repeal that. They want to repeal that in all forms, right in the bill. Yeah. Repeal, repeal, the bill. yeah. repeal all the acts. John, that's led up to this. John, I, I don't know. I, I, just a question. Uh, I, you know, I think my little John's a little early enough. But when we took that, when they took that land from whoever owned individual the, owners, the original owners, whoever that might be, all right, how did they take it? Eminent domain? Have they got legal papers to say they took it? Has the state got all the papers? Have, have, did they do it legally? How should, all, should all be registered in the land code of yeah. Massachusetts? Well, I mean, that's, 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 that's 90 years ago or so. But, you know, it's recorded as a, a, a piece of property that was bought and recorded and paid for, and they paid all these individual people. That's the way uh -huh. I remember explaining I'm talking about that. a copy of the original agreement. No, okay. that's, that's that makes sense. Sense. Is this, well, we're going to research that. We talked yeah, about that last week. All right. We asked uh, Representative Costino and Senator that, Chase that's to research around, that. Uh, I, I've seen that those, that, that's around here somewhere. There was it a was in the library. library. Yeah. It was in the library. Richie, we're going to have Billy Connolly get one too. Well, you know, <clears throat> and I don't know if this has ever happened. And, you know, I, I understand to write a letter to Governor Wells and saying, I would like you to reconsider our town. They've taken our land. And we, you know, we're like every other town. We're in. We're having our problem. Okay. However, has anybody taken the time and sent Governor Welk or Salucci a copy so they can physically read the agreement the state had with our town when they took this land? You know, are they just getting paid? 
we made a deal with the town back and uh, we took the land and this. But has anyone ever said, here's the legal papers and this is what the town of Clinton would receive as our taking this land from us. This is what we have promised them. If this doesn't impress the governor, if, if, if in fact we have any kind of a case in court, that would be the thing. If you have a deal with the person, and you're the state of Massachusetts, and you have a signed deal that you will take care of this, you will supply them with water, take care of their sewerage needs, then you have a bona fide deal. <clears throat> Has he seen that legal paper? Has anyone seen that legal paper? We're talking about it may be in the library. It was in the library. It was yeah. Yeah. But has anyone ever seen it? I have. We we asked like John and I just say it. I'll tell you who was We're in here one that. night. Uh Walter O'Malley up on uh, Harris Hill was in here one night with a copy of it. His father went to select them way back. Yeah. John O'Malley had the original copy or had copies of that. If, and those are the copies that are supposed to have been in the library. Excuse he gave it to the library. Excuse me. Uh, after your meeting with uh, Representative Constantino and Senator Chase last week, right. Mr. O'Malley came into the hall. Oh, did he? Yes, came I was leaving. You were in executive session. Yeah. And uh, he asked if the representative of the senator was still here. And I said, no, they're already left. Well, he said he wasn't watching it on television, but someone called him at home yeah. and told him about it. Yeah. And he told me about his father being yeah. uh, one of three people that researched that whole thing yeah. and had all that information yeah. in the library. Yeah. And he said he has copies of it in, at home himself. Yeah. Well, we'll ask Wanda to get us yeah. well, you know, exactly what he said. Said. I understand that, you know, the, the letters to the governor and so <coughs> If you're able, if you're able to set up a meeting we with the governor the or the lieutenant governor, and you have this agreement that the state of Massachusetts has gone into agreement with the town of Clinton, and you can show them that and they can read it, they're, don't you believe that they're going to be at least more sensitive to a written agreement than a letter from Bill Bailey saying, hey, look, we're in dire need, we need your help? Every town needs their help. Every, you know, there isn't a town in the state that doesn't need their help. And, you know, they have an agreement with us. They have a bona fide agreement with the town of Clinton. And they should be honored. Certainly should. No it question. Seems, Mr. Chairman, yes, it seems to me there's a lot of interest in this thing. Everywhere you go, people are talking about all around town. I'm wondering if maybe, the, you know, the, everybody knows about the agreement. It's there somewhere. Have you ever seen it? No. You know, you just heard about it all the time you lived in town. Yeah. Why don't we get some kind of ad hoc committee, people that are interested, let them sit down, let them, you know, if they can research this thing themselves and put together a package for us so that we can make some sense of what was the original agreement, what was said in 1930, Perfect. what was said in 1950, Perfect. what was said in 1983, 87. You know, so you can get a chronological yeah, order. Yeah. Every, every, one, every one of us in this room uh, have had stories. I was told when there was uh, St. John Cemetery was up there. They had to move all the frame out, of, and there was farmhouses. Who the farms belonged to? How did they take them? The whole, how much land did they actually take? And you know, did and this is the agreement that they made with us. 1898. The house that sits next to my house came from Cluttonville down below where the reservoir is today. The house that sits next to mine. I would guess that if you put out a call for it, then you get a lot of people in doubt. At least an interest. Get something. Get a committee together, let them start. Uh, then they could report back to you and say, hey, gee, I think we better get a lobbyist here. You know, they're killing us. Well, I'm all in favor of sending letters now, Jim. I'm I'm it, and I think it's an excellent idea. The more people who will send letters, the better up. You know, the more help it's going to be. But you know, if, if you know, I like to see once in my lifetime the real box score of how it happened, what was the promise, who were the people involved, who they promised, what year it was, what they paid for, the whole ball of wax.
Well, well I think we could start by going yeah. to the library to see who signed it out. Mr. Chair, there's, there's, no, no, there's one interesting note about that whole agreement. Everybody says, and have said for years and years, years as long as I can remember, that the town of Clinton gets all its water free from the watchers of reservoir. But I think the members of the Finance Committee should know this, and people aren't aware of it. We pay the MDC $50,000 a year to pump that water into our lines. No, 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 we pump our own water. Why do we have it in the budget? Fifty thousand dollars that we pay for electricity. We pay for that. We pay for that. We, pay that. we pay for that. We own that. We, we own that. We pump our own water. But nice point, Bobby. If you well, know, hey, look, yeah. if you stick with the sewers, I'll stick with the water. <laughs> 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 that was all for years now. The colonial press is the seller there in the basement. But, uh, yeah. The, uh, the in the addition, uh, what uh, you're oh. saying here. There was a precedent set also on two prior occasions where the court ruled in favor of Clinton on different situations concerning this same situation, not the wastewater treatment plant, but everything having to do with the MDC and the previous Massachusetts Water Authority. So there is something that's already gone through the courts, and that's probably available, and I did bring that up to the uh, representative Constantino and Senator Chase, and they were also going to look into that for us too. But I like your idea about having an ad hoc committee also to help and maybe keep talking uh, to them I, every I week, think, too. I think the Board of Selectmen, and certainly you've got an awful lot to do. I know there isn't much time left. That's right. If that's in committee, the way that guy is moving along down there and the way it got into committee without was pretty very, it. huh? Without anybody really knowing it. Was no, pretty, you wouldn't uh, know it was in here. That's the part I don't like about it. Mr. Chairman, thank you. A million bills dying to me. Yeah, yeah. If, if you, if you, members of the board had a chance to read the minutes of the MWRA meeting in July that Mr. Clinton's deal passed out at the last meeting, there was a comment by the legal counsel of the MWRA said his, his comment to the governor's office was, we'll give you $12,000 if you get rid of Clinton for it. Twelve thousand. Right in the minutes. Right here. Here's the minutes right here. More than twelve thousand dollars. That was the that was the twelve million. Twelve million. I mean twelve million. Twelve million. Twelve million. Twelve million. That's that was the general council. Count count count. I guess where the crisis was. Well, the governor the governor wants the MWRA to assume one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Uh, yeah, I think $20 million. It's getting like the MDC. We don't talk thousands in here. And that's why, that's why this is in the supplemental budget. He's going to give Wells $12 million for his budget if he gets rid of Clinton. And that's in that, is that the way it's written? Is that the way it's written? I might visit this levy quicker than he thinks. I, just to go back, I think one of the things that's been clarified from the whole, with all the discussions we've had here, right, the driving force behind the plant and the agreements that we're all talking about, all the agreements were wiped out, in my understanding, when the legislature passed the Chapter 307 of the Acts of 1987. That is the governing statute for the treatment plant. The water is a separate issue. Those are separate agreements that no one's even discussed. All they're talking about right now is the treatment plant. So let's, if we lump them together, we may lose the water. We've got we to gotta look at the treatment plant only. The water, my discussions with the MWRA, they assured me that water has not been discussed. Only the sewage treatment plant. That's the thought on their side. Well, so they're giving you a quick, uh, a quick pro quo here. In other words, they're, they're saying, you don't lay out the water. We'll give you the water. That's, that's no problem. Well, what but they're acknowledging is this, that they... They understand why the water is given to the town. What they're doing is throwing your bone bridge. What they're doing is saying, hey, look, we didn't say anything about water here. We'll, we'll give you all the water you want. No, oh, what they're no. done. What they're well, done that's, that's the oldest trick in the world. No, yeah, what I'm saying, Phil, is that. This year it's sewer. Next, next year it's your water. It doesn't exist. I know, but what they're trying to do, Richie, is take your focus away from it by saying, hey, we're, we're not going to take your water away. Don't worry about that's that. Water, you know? Well, needless to say, needless to say, this. It falls into the same category, and, and well taken on your part, uh, Rich. But right now, Who is this? Who is this? people are paying 75 percent of their water it's use to store their sewers. So the more water you use, and then 75 percent is your sewer bill. 
Oh, my God. That's pretty, uh, that's not a bad investment. We'll give you more water, but 75% you're going to pay for storage. Somebody signing up for the community already. Good. Oh, that's, well, that's, I, I think that committee is a good idea. I feel like you're close. I think that committee is a good idea. Uh, in fact, if, if we can beat it this time, we know that it ain't going to stop. These people down in right. Belmont, Arlington, Absolutely. Cambridge area, they're just livid. The Clinton gets free storage. And I keep mentioning it. Every month they have their MWA RA advisory board. They just continually talk about Clinton getting free this and free that. Not that we lost the third or you know, better of our town. And you know, I think that if we, you know, the committee would take time to come back with all the steps, but the Senate would be ready for any further thing down the line. Because it ain't going to stop here. It's not going to stop. The SMWRA is the biggest bureaucracy I've ever seen <coughs> created in this state. And when were they created? Like in 83? 84, 85. 84. And they've become an unbelievable bureaucracy. And they just keep getting powerful and powerful and more powerful. And if you don't fight them, they're going to walk all over you. They don't report to anybody. But, and I don't care if it, if it takes us money to fight them and, and hire a lobbyist, but I think we've got to start somewhere. Get some. There seems to be an awful lot of interest out there. Get some people that are willing to research this thing. Kind of set it up. See where, we, where we've been and what kind of agreements we've got with them now. Because it's more of a bargain. And come back and say, hey, look, this is what we got to do. We, we may need a lobbyist. We're going to have to pay a lobbyist to uh, represent our interests because none of us are down there every day. We can follow this thing all the time. I, I, I think, I, I don't know what the sense of the legislature and the uh, legislative leadership is right now, but I think the main focus is the governor. Uh, since 1987, the NWRA has, has started the wheels in motion to get rid of this plant from the day one they took it over. Uh, but. That Governor Dukakis always supported the agreements with the town of Clinton, uh, and there wasn't much brought to a head of, on this issue. But now there's a new uh, governor, new administration, which is supporting the MWRA's position. Uh, so they, there has been talk about it for a couple of years, but now it's coming to a dangerous point because of the uh, new new governor. So I think that's where a lot of the uh, pressure has to focus on right now. Well, if you were the governor, Michael, and we're in the MWRA, we propose that we know that you've got a budget crunch. And like Bob Winchum and John McNamara said correctly, we in the MWRA would like to give you $12 million for your budget problem. But we want this other matter cleared up. My gosh, that's that's pretty heavy thinking going on. Now that's quite a commitment. And if they can come up with $12 million for that commitment, they can come up with another $25 million for taking care of the water. And then they can wipe you right out. And they will. They need the $12 well, million just to cover their monthly uh, salaries. How many uh, stations do they maintain in the state like that? Or are we the only one on that level of they have others that they, they charge them in the other districts. Yeah, I want this. That's why they want to get rid of us. Yeah. We're, the, keep, we're no good to them. They keep saying that to their rate payers. The town of Clinton is costing you yeah. rate payers. Oh, sure. More. $60 a uh, month or more. Sure. Sure. That paper yeah. Clinton's cost. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? And this is why the other towns are feeling that way. They're feeling the crunch. If you went to uh, if you went to Arlington or another little town, you're saying, look, because Clinton is getting it free, <clears throat> you're paying $100 more. Yeah. All right? So naturally, what is an average taxpayer in Arlington going to say? Well, gee, why the hell aren't they paying? Right. Yeah. And you would think that legislators and senators would be feeling that way because they're going to be getting aid from them. That's why we do need to, you know, this thing's got to be, it's got to be fought. Right? Yeah. Just keep my breath. In any event, are we going to be right? Don't let them get all over that rookie beat. I notice it's 845. Yeah. What are you going to do? Do you have another meeting with the yes. board? Uh, when do you think it's. Uh, you want to get a hold of Phil? Yeah, yeah. when we send time, we'll get a hold in a couple weeks. A week or something. Well, so uh, 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 what I would say, Michael, with the facts, and we get these figures. That we're going to go into. I'd like to get a report. Stanley wanted to find out about the, the quarterly tax. So that the taxpayers, when it comes time for our annual town meeting, we have all that information. Any question that any of the townspeople want to ask on this, 
let's get them the answers so that we can be able to get up there and vote. Anything that's coming this way, uh, if we're going to use the Band-Aid on the 350000 and be, uh, what, we'd have to raise, what, 27000 something? Yes, sir, we could. We have to have a town meeting. Whatever, five. whatever you decide, whatever the Board of Selectmen decide to when you want the best timing for a meeting of that caliber and whatever well, we else we want. We've got to address the rest of this, too. We're going to go our separate ways on this, or we're going to work together on it or what, on that additional twenty-one and twenty-two thousand dollars. The finance committee are going to join meeting the finance committee recommendations. Well, I, I think we resolved whether we're going to go with, with the deferment plan. Is that yeah, I correct in saying the that? The additional, uh, the twenty-seven thousand dollars. So the, the next meeting, uh, well, we make a decision. Can, let's see what we come up with, and uh, yeah. uh, right. we can. Uh, I don't know how much money we've got, but uh, but, we but, I, we, but I think as we as we've done in the past, I think. You know, Richie can look into it and present some options to us, and then we can take it from there. About two weeks. You know, it's. it's it, two weeks. You hate to say this because. Yeah, why don't we have it the same What's the date? The 18th. You know, schedule right now. Let's do it then. I would think that'd be the best night because if he does bring us a plan that will show us some reductions, not cost projections, not what we're paying on. Yeah, yeah. But we, when he left us back four months ago, he was going to come in and come back to us with some way to save some money. Mm -hmm. and better. better. Because, you know, I don't want to be told, that, well, here's what the clash of July and Arnest. He was going to come back to this board with some savings. Some options. That's right. Some options, options. exactly. So, so that, that, that might eliminate the 27. I said that I had about three hours yesterday with Wausau. And they upped the insurance 20%. Okay. Uh, workman's comp. All of a sudden. Gone out of sight. That's a war. Iron work, sixty-five dollars per month. I think September eighteenth would be our best. Fine. Way. Is September eighteenth. Is that okay with you? Fine. It's okay. September eighteenth. You got Jack Sherry coming in? Yeah. Uh, September eighteenth. What uh, day is it? Wednesday. Wednesday. What time? Seven. Seven thirty. Seven o'clock. All right. He's going to be here seven. I'll go off time. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, uh, before I leave, you know, the Finance Committee, the Finance Committee, Martin H., you, you know, you being an old selectman, one of the old selectmen, one of the oldest selectmen here, I'd like to take the opportunity to wish my girlfriend, Mary, a very happy retirement. God bless you for all the help you've been to the Finance Committee. Mary won't be here when you come back. She's been a wonderful, wonderful lady. There you know he's speaking for all of us. Yeah. Can't get away from the mic. What are we really going to miss? All right. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, then call Mr. Fluke. And I guess Mr. Ferguson. John, work for the MDC. Because he said he called last week about. Yeah. Tell him about who to know. We had researched all that about the MDC. And he talked to Joe Duffy. And all Where is it? That's the question. Well, we'll make copies of our expense. Well, it was in the library. It didn't have to be signed out, wouldn't it? It's, it's got to be recorded somewhere. It's got to be in the library. Maybe. He, maybe he got them. Did he get them on the library? It's got to be recorded in the registry in Worcester. It has to be. Yeah, but I, I still think you're putting an awful lot of responsibility on your elected legislators to do something though, that we, as a town, do. should be doing. I and mean, they've got to represent Clinton as well as some other communities. And you know, while they, they have brought that, they have done what they could for this matter so far. They but certainly they have. Record. They've done an excellent but job. I'm telling us. I don't think we should rely on them to go research and the, you know the. No, that's why right. he, he, he meant to ask whoever. He he the chairman, I'll make a motion right now that we uh, get Mr. Conley in and see if he can do it. If he needs some help, then we'll, we'll just have to bite the bullet and hire somebody to help Mr. Conley with his suggestion as to who to get to do this kind of stuff. To get It's very important. I don't think you can leave it up to a citizen or anybody else yet. You have to get somebody with legal expertise in them. I agree really. with that. They got away from me before.
before I ask them to could commit to them for some money. But if you want to go on a legal like that, you could uh, probably a provision there that uh, some way you can do it, do it legally, you know what I mean? Now that we have our budget set up, you know what I mean? Where this thing has come up as an emergency, actually, is what I'd call it. Anybody else will look at it, but I think it's an emergency. I think we've got to act on it now, Jim. Seriously, and with the uh, September 18th meeting, I mean, if we will know by then how much money we're going to be committing, or at least we'll have an idea, we could always put on this special town meeting for, for appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. We, did, we can't just keep but talking that no, that happens. You've got to do those agreements. Yeah. And that's all so we've done. Certainly, some of that money that goes into the uh, sewers you know, that's, that we paid is supposedly staying in the town for that half of the sewer and water bill. Couldn't that be used? This is pertaining to the sewers. It's the biggest part of it. It's appropriate. It's so appropriate. I'm sure the people would go along with it. It's either spend a dollar now or spend a million later. Oh, there's no question about that. I, I agree with that. We got it. I would be in favor of uh, favor. Uh, Second, Mr. Pate's motion as long as we're, we're going to send off to the Mr. Conley, our solicitor, but we want to hear forthwith what his idea of the matter is, right. how we should address it. Right. You know, if he needs to handle it uh, to start off with, does he need help right off the beginning and, and, you know, and I, I think get his feelings? One of the next few days, days right, you know, we are. One of the things I want to talk about tonight, maybe we should have a lot of me because they, they are the ones to ultimately hire the oh, firm, yes, for, for legal, so we should have a lot of me join me with the law committee and go into it and get it, have sort of come in and discuss with everybody. Maybe even at uh, the next week or the week after the 11th, whatever more like. They're coming in with the, the 10 or the 11. We do it the 11th. I was going to schedule it for the 11th. Oh, the law committee. Law committee. Law board mind if I try to get Mr. O'Malley in the next few days? No, no, no absolutely. Walter, Walter will help in any way he can. The house to him yeah. see what we Walter will help. I guarantee it. Information is or how we can get it or whatever he has, we'll return it to him. We just we'll copy it or even commit to uh, the registry. I have a feeling it's recorded in the registry. Somewhere. It would have to be, Jim. There's boundaries established. That you go out and mark the bounds and paint them. I've done it two or three times. I know, and there's the, there's the bounds right there. They have to be recorded somewhere. And if that's the case, how can they rescind an act if it's recorded? <coughs> but uh, if if it's recorded in the deeds, I think we'd have an argument. But if it's just in legislation, they just repeal it. They can repeal it. So. <laughs> right, but yeah, how so. did they get it to put it in the deed? Well, that's so that's they what have we want to do. We want to make sure we have deeds. That that's why you need a lawyer. Oh. Exactly. To go in there. But we can't wait until the 11th, Rich. I think we should let the solicitor Connolly know, Attorney Connolly, that we want him to start to follow. Oh, absolutely. I'm just saying, for a committee with a report on the 11th. Right. Say, hey, here's, here's what I think right. we should do. Absolutely. Yeah. If absolutely. it's a special right. I'll, I'll, I'll start with the uh, census right. office tomorrow, and all the book and page numbers on all the land up there is recorded in their books over there. I know that to be a fact. So if that's recorded in their books, that's got to be recorded in the registry. And listed. That's what's leading me toward the registry. Mm -hmm. if, if those takings or those pieces of land that we assess up there, like where the middle school was, a parcel, different parcels, and a huge broad area there. Al Sapiti had a lot of they, land up there. Yeah, you? a lot of people did. Those can, are recorded somewhere, and they have to be. If they have book and page numbers, you can go into Worcester in the registry, and there they are. Whether it's broken down into individuals and who they bought them from or what, I don't know that, but I know they they don't have it that way over there, but they should have probably a hundred parcels of land. I think the whole thing was taken then and like you have two lots and you make it into one. I mean, so they probably took maybe a hundred lots or so and made them all into one. And then that was recorded and it has a book and page number. So I'll, I'll take that part of it. Let's work on it tomorrow and see what I can come up with. I'll try to get a whole water over there and put the house for me. Hey, I'm Waller will help in any way, Waller, shape, or manner. He, 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 uh, he already came and told me. Yeah. Richie, have we sent any letters down for a meeting or anything, or what are we going to do? I, the letter was sent down Monday just uh, asking the governor for a meeting. And with the board, did you, re you record it? Did you register it? Registered the letter? Was it registered? No, no, no. Was, was Would you send it registered? No. Why? I don't care if you send it to the Pope. It should be. Uh, I'd register it. I was, think it's that important. Was the legislator's copy? 
You got to return the seat to show that he got it. Yeah. He's, he's but, honest. He's honest. He's going to change. But, change. but, uh, but uh, uh, no, somebody else in, the in his office is staff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He certainly ain't going to sign for me. Oh, I know that. Yeah. Well, they can take control of the round file from you know. He's going to get me out. And let us for some time from the chamber coin and select the bait center. You want to you want to make up a letter and have it typed and send it down. With me and John sent one. I sent one. And I'm going to be sent one. And the letter went down from the uh, board of reference to a date for the letter. governor. This is what you and John sent. Can we get copies of that yes. letter asking for the meeting? Yeah, John. Copies. Make copies of those. Any of those copies if you want to post down. Is there anything else? Yes, yes, yes. Don't want to run too long. Relax. Keep it cool in the camera, of course. Judge, why don't you just, uh, on this time, uh, set up a tickle file and uh, send a second request, say in 10 days. And yeah, send, that one, and send that one registered mail. Follow up. Just in case if somebody did throw this in the wastebasket. Well, uh, I think that the yeah, I mean, legislators can. can Follow up on that. As long as the request was made by the board, uh, Representative Constantino and Senator Chase can follow up on getting a date. I don't. I don't think we need to. Uh, I think that the legislators can handle setting up the date. Well, why don't you take copies of those letters? Yeah, that's why I just want a copy right. so we could yeah. see that the letter was them. sent from the board. And as long as the board made the request, the legislators can go setting up the date. All right. Again, I'd like to thank Senator Chase and Representative Constantino for bringing this to our attention and all the help that they've given us so far. I thought it was very nice of them. If you want to photostat any of those, Michael wants copies of them all. Want to move on? Sure. sure. The first order of business we have here is from the Boston Gas Company for openings at 130 Prescott with 760 Main Street, 761 Main Street, and 13 Pearl Street. Four by four openings. Uh, uh, Repair and leaks and uh, permanently resurfaced by the gas company. Mr. Chairman, uh, I so move. Motion by Mr. Bates and seconded by Second. Mr. Ward that we uh, approve this opening. Any questions? No questions. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Mary, five to nothing. Vote. Uh, I'm going to put Chairman, these together. I believe you have a motion on the floor from John and seconded by. Oh, I, I missed. I'm sorry. That's the going back to the us. contact. Uh, Just to contact the Bill Conley solicitor. John, you want to refresh our yeah, motion? Yeah. <laughs> Does it have to be in a motion? Mr. Okay. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, request Mr. Conley to come to the meeting so that we can explain the severity of this treatment plan. And if he needs extra help or extra money to research yeah. this over the scope of his duty that we find a way to do it. Okay. I second. I second. Uh, Mary, motion by Mr. Bates and seconded by Mr. McNamara that we request yeah. Mr. Uh, William Connolly of Town Solicitor to appear before the board uh, next week. We and we just didn't vote on Mary. To, uh, to bring him up on the case and whatever expertise he can give some recommendations that we may be able to follow here. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Vote. Five to nothing. Uh, the next thing I have here moving along is a request from the uh, Scooby Doobies. These uh, are all the same and they're for one o'clock openings on Saturday nights for the month of September. If there's any question, there's four or five of them here. If they're, I'll read them separate. If there's no objection, I'll read them all together and make them one. Uh, a one o'clock opening during the month of uh, uh, September for Scooby Doobies. A one o'clock opening during the month of uh, September for Clinton Turner Burn. A one o'clock opening during the month of September on Saturday nights at the Old Timer Restaurant. A one o'clock uh, opening to the BHA Rhythms on 601 Main Street for a one o'clock opening during the month Saturday night during the month of September. And Jack's Copper Kettle at 212 High Street for Saturday nights during September 1991. Mr. Chairman, I so move. Motion made by Mr. Bates. No second. Seconded by Mr. Champagne. 
and we approved one o'clock openings during the month of September for the uh, closing. For closing, I mean, well, open to one. Booby Doobies, uh, Clint Turner's, the old timer, BHA Rhythms, and Jack the Carpenter Hell. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote Mary five to nothing. I have a um, payment request for the library. It's payment number four. And it's for $21,690 for both to look at. Sign. Approved by the architect. And uh, I was over at a meeting yesterday and the project seems to be moving along fine. Uh, what is the chance to go and look at it? They've done a substantial amount of work and it doesn't look good. And uh, things just seem to be going uh, on schedule. The contractor and the architect also gave me yesterday a change order for six hundred and seventy-six dollars. The change order includes fixing a wall, a wall in the men's room that um, we need to have some metal stubs, studs put in and straighten the existing masonry wall it was crooked and to dress it up a little bit. Also they had a relocated door in the men on uh, the women's room. The total cost of both would be six hundred and seventy-six dollars. Approved. The money will be taken out of the community development and get settlement account. Grant money available. Rich, on this, uh, they have the current work completed 24 work, but that's what shows. What am I misreading? 10% is held from retainage. Okay. And they also have some board. Which the architect is more or less expert for the works in yes. That was part of the contract. Also, a confidential memo concerning outstanding legal issues with the town council, the board, and it's a confidential memo. Here with the Honorable Board of Selectmen from Patrick McNamara in reference to a tire and appliance disposable date, which will be held on August 27, 1991. The Clinton Recycling Commission is planning a tire and appliance disposable date. The tentative date is for October 19, 1991. The final details need to be worked out before the October 19th date can be finalized. We are sending you this letter to inform you of our plans and ask if you have any questions, suggestions, or concerns that you notify myself and Mr. Monturi, recycling board commission members, copy to the Board of Selectmen, Health Superintendent DPW, Richard Monturi. They're going to hold a, uh, a uh, tentative date of October 19th for a uh, disposable for a tire and appliances. They're going to take the tires over there? Thank you, Chairman of the Executive Commission, for notifying the board. Well, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh. They're going to take tires over there? Yeah, the one day. One day. October 19th, tentatively. One day they're going to take a tire as well as appliances, like washing machines, uh, refrigerators, white, white, you know, something like that. Right. Right. They haven't got all the final details mapped out yet, but that's a tentative take. Good copy. Uh, they get young enough. Thank you. The last, the last of white goods appliance day they had was quite successful. In fact, we had to look at another bit. Yeah, it's just a little bit of information. Uh, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I open the topic? Uh, you'll have to wait a minute, Jack. We'll go through this and we'll discuss it. All right. Um, the final issue on top of that ad was you don't know if Mary's last meeting with us tonight. Um, I selected the clerk's photographer and we didn't take up the issue with the finance committee as far as funding, but uh, that's probably something we could take up at the next town meeting and do something then. But in the meantime, there isn't any money left in the account. 
and I just want to get permission from the board to stop advertising the condition. Get someone in here, maybe Mary can come back for a day in the future and just a little retire and work with to show them what needs to be done. But there is money in the account, and um, we don't have to set a salary at this point, but to have someone come in and have people come in to study to you and we'll have a salary range to work with. Board. Did you write up a job description where Barry's? Uh, I don't have. I don't think we have I sit down with her before she goes and puts them together with job description. I'm not sure everyone else. Maybe a long list. Uh, we can get a personnel oh, board, <coughs> personnel board going and uh, <laughs> dress up that way. But I think the person, I would guess the person to be hired is just going to be a clerk and the board wants to address the scenario separately. Uh, it's up to the board. Mary was unique. Position because she did both. Uh, not many people that do shorthand. Um, we both kind of worked around for a week and then at night. Um, so I don't know if we to. John's talked about the past about taking the meetings and we did at one point do it. We do have the capabilities of taking the meetings and uh, recording our mo the motions of the board separately and keep minutes like that. So we can do that. We don't have anyone take the time to commit to take minutes. So you still have to. Mary does tremendous amount of work besides just taking minutes and leaving. Oh, yeah. 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 No, 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 no. Well, yeah. That's what we want to address is how many hours we want to commit to the new position. Right. And I certainly don't want to see it a trinity because she, she takes a, a big load. No, right. But so, we'll it's never it's two, you might need two yeah. people. Yeah, well, that's, 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 daily that's, what sure. that's what we decided, you know, bring somebody in to do a stenography to our, our meeting. Right. We want to take, you know, you take and get the exact. Probably could get Mrs. Samus to come in. But like I say, we do have extra money until we can hire somebody to get started. Right. We could impose on Mrs. Sam and maybe for two. Well, if they haven't tried to not make that a requirement for the job, as yeah. we have some right. shot right. and or sonography, but uh, if someone like that was available, it should be a, an added uh, benefit. Consideration or whatever. Chairman, would you recommend that we go on in favor of like a motion or something that we start the process for seeking yeah. a replacement for Mr. O'Brien? I would make that right. a form of motion. Well, I'll second. While the, uh, Mr. Montori to uh, start, the, start the process to uh, replace uh, Motion made by Mr. McNamara, Mary. Seconded by Mr. Mate, uh, Mr. Bates that we uh, instruct Mr. Montori to got the process for replacement work. Uh, uh, this could, will all be stated the hour and the qualifications and everything in the description in this job description as it goes by draft to get for the board to review yeah, and once it's approved then we'll start that right. interview process. Yeah we'd like to see it before you have it. Any further right. questions? So when the problem is okay. all in sorry. Any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed not five to nothing Mary. And just stay with um, for myself, I just want to thank Mary for everything she's done for me. She's the first person I remember when I came here, and she was the first person I talked to to get a background on the town and the position. And she's been a tremendous help to me personally. Uh, not only as a secretary, but as a friend. I want to thank that. I think that I've been honored to have you, Richard, because you've really you've been an addition to this town and you've spent many hours day and night here with so many important issues right now facing the town problems that uh, Mr. Monturi has been doing an excellent job and I hope that he continues for many more years. He really is an asset to this board and to the town's people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mary, I would just like to say that I've worked with you for eight and a half years and I never found anybody any more pleasant and easy going with the people and straightened out a million messes that we would have made a complete thing. You've been wonderful. I certainly enjoy it. I've enjoyed the years. How many? I'm 27 years. 27 years. years. <coughs> God bless you in your retirement, and I hope you're very happy. God's been good. I've had many years of good health. That's the yep. main thing, too, really. I, I think I can if you help need you anything, give me a call. Thank <laughs> 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 Anything else for you? I'm all set.
I think the whole board can feel the same way as John. You know, I'm sure. As you thank them. You know, we sincerely appreciate your efforts, Mary, and we wish you well in your retirement. Yeah. 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 Thank you from me too, Mary. I worked with you not through the years in my other job, and since I've been on this board almost a year and a half, as Richie said, that uh, you become a good friend to me too, and uh, to cheer me up and give me encouragement, and you know, you really helped me and become a better selectman, and give me encouragement and help uh, along the way, and hear your voice when I call here. Uh, take a long time and, you know, to, uh, to uh, find someone to replace you and you will be missed. I appreciate all you did for me. I wish you were missed. Yeah. I hope to be on this board for many more years. Thank you. An excellent job, I say. Uh, Mary, I don't know what to say. I was here when you came and I'm here when you left. <laughs> <laughs> Only 27 years of knowledge could give you, and it's been a real benefit to me, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. I wish you the best of luck, too, on the board. I wish all of you the best of luck. You'll hey, need it. I think God is important. Yeah, we see you around. Good morning. Mr. Thomas. Burke has a statement. Well, the one thing that. Oh, wait a minute. Excuse uh, me, Bob. Wait a I think we should address the. Uh, we have some openings on a lot of commission reports, and. Uh, I don't know, I think we should address this very well because I see the letter from Pat back in order to recite. And I think he's got a couple of positions out there. Well, I, I made him a list, I don't have it ready. I've gone back to see what appointments, the annual appointments, and what committees half the people have to be reappointed this year, you know, that their times are up, and then uh, any listings of the different committees here that you have to appointments to. When do we have to, when do we appoint these people? We don't have to do that. No, no, not tonight. No, no. That's, that's that one of your next meetings. Yeah, why don't you try that on the What are you going to do? The openings, at least when the openings are actually that way, we'll have an idea. Yeah, I'll listen to the chat down a couple weeks. I think that's the appointments. Oh, you did? That sounds like the next week will have it. So the old state will have it. Yeah, so we can. Just so the board next week's agenda. The fifth, the fourth. The only thing that I schedule in part take all night is a meeting with the members of the Conservation Board of Health and the Plan Board and any of the other boards to discuss the environmental impact report with RCI. The deadline for submission of our comments is the 6th. We've gotten comments from all the boards and I'm expecting some more. And um, we want to go over those comments and set up a time after that date to have RCI come in to address not only the different boards and commissions but also the general public. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. What's the date? Um, well, next, next one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's on there if you're talking about the letters. I, I, I got copies I can show the board. I did write to the item, and they, I noticed it was in the paper tonight. And I did write a letter to the editor also for the uh, Edmonton Calgary Gazette. But that takes a little longer to get in there. But I would like to have all the board members write a letter to the papers also. Just to keep this in the forefront so that uh, every week call it something. the editorial board. Is that the proper address? Let's see. Let's see. What is the other in care of uh, TNG? Franklin Street, is it? They still there? 20 Franklin. I don't know. Except that it's going to be 20 Franklin. That's not 20 Franklin. You're at 242 Trish. No, you're at 156. 156. Jim, excuse me. If you thought it would be worthwhile, you as chairman of the board, to write a longer piece explaining to the board's whole feeling on your social security. You could submit it to the editors to the editors, the editorial board, for, you know, the op-ed page where they'll have, as we see it, you know. Oh, yeah, I've and, seen that. Uh, yeah, you I've see the, that the police that. union had, what's the, yeah. uh, about the cuts in the police department. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're all unanimous. And it gives, so. gives both, uh, every issue you can bring up about it after you've got it researched enough, you know, this is what happened back in 1898 all the way through the whole thing. 1895. Yeah. The act is 1898. Yeah. But uh, if anybody's got letters to the editor, they can uh, write it to the Telegram Gazette, and it's box 15012, and that's in Worcester, and the zip is 01615. That's 01615. And uh, I would suggest everybody out there to write, because we're all writing, and I'm sure everybody else that was here tonight will be writing. We need all the help we can get. That's a good suggestion, Jim. Again, you got to be real big. Oh, what? What's wrong with that? Let me see here. Still legislation, so it's never going to stop. I thought it was going to say it's right now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, I'm very signed. short this week. Huh? I signed. I came in. Oh, you were in earlier, yeah. yeah. So we're going to sign the warrant. In fact, did I uh, sign it? I'm, I'm going to bid my fond adieu. I already signed. It. What? 